Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and when Apple released the Apple Watch Series 6, they had another smartwatch that they debuted alongside of it, a lower cost model with less features and none of the newness of the Series 6. In fact, for some, this watch was immediately dismissed as a worse version of the Apple Watch Series 4, a two-year-old product. But I think they're missing some things here, and I think the Apple Watch SE is a great value, and it might end up being the Apple Watch that most people buy. Now, first off, what is an Apple Watch SE? Well, Apple has released other products dubbed SE before. The two you're familiar with is the original iPhone SE, which debuted alongside the iPhone Success, and the 2020 version of the iPhone SE, which is currently being offered with the iPhone 11. Both of these products were and are amazing values that pack in a modern chipset into the previous body designs of older iPhones to save on cost. For example, the original iPhone SE, Apple packed in a lot of the same internals that the iPhone Success had, like its camera and CPU, into the body of an iPhone 5S. For the 2020 SE, Apple took the modern A13 chip found in its iPhone 11 and parts for its computational photography software and packed that into the body design of the iPhone 8. Most importantly for these phones, it wasn't the classic design for why they sold, it was the price, which brought both of these phones down to $399, which is considered kind of a bargain deal for iPhone shoppers. The Apple Watch SE might sound like the same exact concept, but it's actually different than the other takes on the SE that we've seen from Apple so far. Apple doesn't give you the old Series 3 body design, but instead give you the same exact design as you would get with the more expensive version of the Series 6. That means it gets the larger 40 millimeter and 44 millimeter displays, the haptic digital crown, and improved speakers. If you walked into a room and saw a silver Apple Watch SE and a silver Apple Watch Series 6 on the table, you probably wouldn't even be able to tell the difference. So what gives? Where is the compromise? Well, the cost-cutting measures on this version isn't the design, it's in the features. The SE saves costs in other ways, like using an older chipset with the S5 chip, which was found on the Series 5, and it also removes features found on even older Apple Watches going back to the Series 4. So there's no ECG reader and no always on display. But it begs the question, does a lack of an ECG reader, a lack of an always on display, and a lack of a newfangled blood oxygen sensor, or even the lack of 20% faster performance that you would find on the S6 chip, does that really matter for a smartwatch? Well, it depends. As far as performance goes, I describe the Series 6 S6 processor as not exactly being a revolution in performance like previous versions of the Apple Watch were. The S6 just gives you a bit more speed that is noticeable in some places. In particular, the initial setup process is much faster on the Series 6 than it was on my Apple Watch SE. I didn't precisely measure setup times or anything like that, but the SE felt about half as slow during the initial setup. When you Using the watches side by side, there's a slight noticeable improvement with the Series 6 loading apps slightly faster. The Series 6 is snappier and makes quick interactions slightly faster on the watch, but it's a small improvement. And if you're not doing side by side comparisons for the average user, I think they'll be hard pressed to notice the difference, especially if they've never owned an Apple Watch before. The other major difference, like I mentioned before, is the lack of an always on display with the SE. This is one of the most important features that I think the average consumer will miss having between both of these watches, as being able to see your time and other useful complications like weather without necessarily having to raise your wrist every single time is nice. However, it's not completely necessary, as the little wrist raise motion you do with your Apple Watch to turn on the display still works pretty well, and even with my other Apple Watches with an always on display, I usually do the wrist raising motion whenever I want to look at the time. There's also a benefit of not having this always on display, which would be battery life. I found that on my Apple Watch SE, I consistently got better battery life than my Apple Watch Series 6, which had an always on display. And I was able to get about two days of battery life on the SE, complete with one night of sleep tracking, a new feature found in watchOS 7 before I had to put it back on the charger. Okay, well, what about the lack of some of the more advanced health sensors? The Apple Watch SE may not have all of the same health sensors that the Series 6 has, 
but it does have probably the two most important ones that will cover most users' needs. The first one is a heart rate sensor that measures the beats per minute of your heart. Not only is this sensor great for getting accurate results for exercise sessions by giving you a pretty good estimate of your active calories burned, but it will also send you high and low heart rate notifications. For example, if you're sitting on the couch for an hour and all of a sudden your heart rate spikes to 130 beats per minute and you've been sitting there for the past 10 minutes, well, that watch will send you a notification alerting you to this abnormally high rate for being sedentary. And these notifications have actually led to people seeking medical attention when they otherwise would not have and have led to life-saving results. Secondly, the SE also gets the fall detection feature. This feature works to detect hard falls that the user has experienced and in extreme circumstances can even issue an emergency SOS call. Again, the proof is in the pudding here and you can read quite a few articles about these life-saving health features. What it lacks are the two health sensors, both that are less useful to the general public and one that remains unproven. The ECG feature is great, especially if you know that you have an irregular heartbeat or you have a condition known as atrial fibrillation, or your family has a history of heart-related health issues that you might wanna monitor. This feature could also be potentially life-saving if you fit into one of those categories, and it can help you better manage your heart condition, and it might be wise to skip the SE and just pony up an additional $120 for the Series 6 if this sounds like you. However, most people aren't going to realistically take advantage of this feature. In my two years of wearing an Apple Watch with an ECG reader, I've done the reading a few times to test it out, and it's not something that I have found personally useful for my current health status. The blood oxygen sensor on the Series 6 is also untested right now. I poised in my Apple Watch Series 6 review, which you can find up here if you wanna see it, that we really don't know how effective or ineffective this new sensor will be until we see more users using this feature. It could be months or years before we get a clearer picture of the real world benefits of having a blood oxygen sensor that takes periodic readings throughout the day. It could be just as important as the heart rate sensor or fall detection feature, but right now we don't have enough data and it's completely up in the air. It could be nothing more than a gimmick at this point Point, or it could be a new life-saving feature. Now, while we're talking about all these health features, I think it is also fair to point out that a lot of users might not even benefit from those features and they might benefit more from added cellular functionality, which allows your Apple Watch to be on a cellular network, constantly receiving notifications, has the ability to take phone calls, send messages, send emails and receive them, and it serves as a backup if your phone runs out of battery life or if you happen to somehow damage your phone. Of course, other Apple Watches have had cellular since the Apple Watch Series 3, but I think the striking thing about the Apple Watch SE is how much cheaper it is to add the cellular option to your watch. It's only a $50 addition to the watch on the SE, rather than the additional expensive $100 option you would find on the Series 6. So if you're a cellular user, you could end up snagging a cellular Apple Watch SE for $330, which would be $170 less than the cellular version on the Series 6. That's a pretty big savings. It is also a great option for parents or guardians considering using Apple's new family setup feature, which will allow you to set up a cellular Apple Watch for family members without iPhones. Think of children who are too young to use a phone with full access to the internet or elderly parents who don't know how or choose not to carry a smartphone. These family setup Apple Watch plans on the SE would be a great fit for them. And I think that's what a lot of people are missing about the Apple Watch SE and why they're so wrong about it. They view the SE as a watch that in some ways is behind the Series 4 and isn't making any technological advancement. But the importance of the Apple Watch SE is making sure that Apple Watch's core features and functionality are offered to the broadest audience possible. Possible, and I think Apple is hitting that mark by offering a great Apple Watch experience that in reality can only truly be beat by the Apple Watch Series 6. Sure, if you can find a Series 5 on sale for $280, you might want to pick that up, but supply of the Series 5 is eventually going to run out, and I haven't seen any price drops like the one I just mentioned for that watch just yet. 
If you have a Series 4 or above, obviously this watch isn't being marketed towards you. It's being marketed at new Apple Watch users or users who are still wearing their old Series 2 or Series 1 watches. And for the vast majority of people, the features the SE is missing out on aren't going to affect their enjoyment. And like I said before, it even comes with the most important health features that the watch has to offer. And if those things don't matter to you, you can save quite a bit of money by going for the SE, especially if you are planning again on getting a cellular plan. You get most of the Apple Watch features most users want at a better price. And I think that the Apple Watch SE is going to make more people than ever buy an Apple Watch. And I think it's the default option for new Apple Apple Watch users. All right, everyone, hopefully you found that review helpful. If you did, be sure to leave me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. If you plan on buying an Apple Watch SE because of this review, I would really appreciate it if you used one of the affiliate links in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.